Hello everyone and welcome, welcome, welcome back to Fifth Element Tarot. I am here to do my first installment on the new series that I was told about by my guides about a month ago called What I Be On. I know it's not grammatically correct, but the B is about our being. So my team is, my spirit team is really great at analogies and linking otherworldly or spiritual concepts to the 3D. So this is what this series is going to focus on. This is a series that I was, um, I've received huge downloads about it since they told me I was going to do it. Now these other downloads are heavy hitting. So I sat on them. I'm sitting on them, but they're coming. It's about, um, so this series won't be for the faint of hearts. It's about breaking through indoctrination, basically. This series will, series will focus on that. These videos will not be for the faint of heart. I said that already. The agenda is to dismantle indoctrinated thinking about God, Holy Spirit, and the human. Now, I say human because we're in this 3D existence in this matrix and we have hue to us, so we're visible. But we know everything is balanced and if we have visible beings, we have invisible beings, okay? That's the spirit world. So that's the balance of this 3D existence is not only are we here as humans, there are entities that don't have hues, spirit, that also occupy this realm and help us in navigating this realm if we're open to the guidance. So when I lit to set up, when I lit my candles, I was made to light from everything from this first candle here. So I had to light each candle from the first. And I was told starting from source or replenishing from source. Now, as I was lighting, I think I got to the third or fourth candle and my initial candle went out. I simply relit that candle and then continued on. But everything that happens in my setup is symbolic of um, the message that we're going to get today. So there is some sort of assignment to enlighten others, to spread your light. Now, with such an assignment, it can get heavy at times. You may lose steam along the way, but you're to step back, rejuvenate, pause, and then get back to your work and finish your enlightenment. Finish touching and being a light to others. Now, when we are in this spiritual awakening, there are spirit guides that help us along the way. Depending on how far you're in your journey and how much you've um, nurtured that relationship is going to give you the clear thinking or the clear um, ability to hear, sense, and feel this team. So I handpicked these cards about this download that I got because this download was deep. It was about ancient ones. It was about family. So ancient ones, card number one, is are those spirits that were in your ancestral line that have passed on or crossed over. And they act as guides to help you navigate this 3D reality. Now, when those guides from the upper world and the lower world are in synergy, then there's no issue because they all want the same goal. They all have the same agenda. But when I read and I get opposing forces, the reason there are opposing forces is because we have a, basically a family feud in the spiritual. There's no literal fighting, don't get me wrong, but there are definitely two separate agendas. And so we are to get to the point in our discernment that no matter where the information is generating from, our soul knows the truth. So this video... This message is linked directly to the Capricorn video that I just did for December. And when I go to that video, there's the storyline that comes out about a Queen of Wands. This Queen of Wands was so um, intrusive in her energy that she was trying to throw the reading off, meaning get her story, a story that really didn't exist, across. 
But because of my discernment, I was able to pick up on that energy and see it for what it was and listen to my clear guidance. And I went off on this tangent in that reading about my discernment and the layers of protection. So I wrote, our ancestors like any, like all entities have agendas. Those things they consider beneficial to legacy spiritually. When ancestors agree on these things, there's synergy. When they don't, we get opposing forces. Still part of the same ancestral team, but wanting very different things or having very different agendas. Now, the definition for synergy, the interaction or cooperation of two or more organizations, substances, or other agents, I wrote entities, to produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate effects. That's synergy. So when I feel hot energy in a reading, that is my indication that this is a spirit from the lower world. Not a, not a bad thing. It's just a lower vibration because there are echelons in dimensions. Okay, so different layers, different levels, different ranks. So when I feel warm energy, that is my indication that I'm entertaining a spirit from the lower world. When I feel cool energy, it's an entity from the upper world. An entity that is vibrating at a higher echelon than the one at the lower world, but still part of the same ancestral team still trying to affect the change on the material or middle world. So, when we call on ancestors, like any other entity, the spirit of discernment must be present. Discernment allows one to seek those things that are alignment with that are in alignment with their particular soul's journey. This inner knowing guides our way. So when information resonates, no matter what entity, ancestor presents it, if we listen to our soul, it's impossible to be deceived. It's about cultivating your discernment and becoming so strong in that, that any falsehood presented by any source will be easily detected. Now that's power. And... What else? It was something else that I wanted to make note of. So just like anything else, life is about balancing those energies. So what I'll do is um, I was told to read from the book, The Ancient Ones. This is from my mystical shaman oracle deck. So I'll read from the book for card number one. And then I'm supposed to shuffle to get a, a uh, another card at the bottom of the deck. And I'll read from the book for that. And then I'll pull cards to clarify the upper world, the middle world, and the lower world. To kind of tie, kind of tie the message together. So... What do we have for a foundational piece in this reading? The earth. So I love that. It matches the middle world. So it's about coming together and understanding a collaboration of otherworldly and um, upper world and lower world principles and how they affect the middle world, how they affect us in the here and now. So... I'll read from the book both, excuse me, all definitions. This book def breaks the definition into three portions, the essence, the invitation, and the medicine. And I'll read all three for both cards. So card number one, ones are about new beginnings. The essence, the ancient ones are the shamans of old who defeated death and escaped from the tyranny of time. The ancient ones walk the earth just like us in flesh and bone. Now they reside in infinity and can counsel us after we say yes to our calling. They're available to us to attain our full realization. The invitation, the ancient ones are inviting you to reach to the future to help birth a new destiny for the earth. Go ahead, find out who you are becoming 10,000 years from now. If you accept the invitation, great power and blessings will come your way and allow you to craft a new destiny for yourself. Do not hesitate to bite off more than you can chew because you have unlimited spiritual resources available right now. 
the medicine. The ancient ones beseech you to examine your attitudes and actions and be sure that they are in the highest, excuse me, be sure that they are of the highest integrity. Not forgiving an ancestor or yourself is keeping you from the freedom you seek. Remember, this is no longer your karma. You can break the chains that once bound you to the family drama and be free of the generational curses. Forgive the ones you need to release. Honor your biological ancestors by lighting a candle to them tonight. This is about um, those beings that have crossed over that are here to guide us in this realm. And about releasing them of whatever, whatever karmic debt they left for you to clean up. It's about doing the work and not having any attachment or any um, ill will to them for having to do that work. Okay? So then we have card number 17, the earth at the bottom of our deck. Which means this whole reading is going to be based on the information in this card. So the earth, card number 17, 17 breaks to an eight. Eights are about movement and abundance. The essence, earth represents the gift of life. The symbol of this card refers to the body of the plant earth, the human body, and nature herself. We're reminded by this symbol that all creatures are born of the earth and human beings are the stewards of all life on this planet. It refers to what we make of it our health, wealth, security, grounding, solidity, and stability. It reminds us that the world of form is a gift from spirit and needs to be treated with respect. The invitation, when the earth symbol appears, it represents a need to focus on reverence and appreciation for the natural gifts that are coming to you now and always. The concrete world you inhabit is there by the grace of spirit, and you are a part of it. Much can be accomplished now when you focus on compassionate, reverent service to the world. If you act with integrity, gratitude, and humility, you'll find yourself more prosperous than you can imagine. Success is assured when the earth appears as the invitation. The medicine. Do you feel ungrounded or easily thrown off your path lately? Is it time to focus on what nurtures you, to open yourself to the healing of Mother Earth, and see the abundant world around you? Perhaps you've lost the ability to trust your needs will be met and have fallen prey to poverty consciousness. Perhaps you've not been eating well, been overworked and stressed, and forgotten to breathe in the beauty of your surroundings. When the spirit of earth comes as your medicine, you're being reminded that when you practice self-care, take a walk in nature, and focus on the consciousness of abundance, miracles can and do happen. Yes, yes, yes. So those are great messages. Now what I'll do is go ahead and clarify, starting with the upper world, to see what messages we have from the upper world. And I'll use traditional Rider weight to clarify. What do we have additionally from the upper world? Now my cards want to come together two times. Some sort of difficulty in a partnership coming together a choice, an alliance of the world. What additionally do we have? Anything else from the upper world? Cart number 59 breaks to a 14. 14 breaks to a five. Fives are all about change and conflict. Exactly what I was explaining. Thank you. And my opening, it's about um, a spiritual family feud, not seeing eye to eye, uh, what the best course of action is to get the spiritual legacy outcome that they want. It's the best way I can describe it. I hope it makes sense. Okay, so face down what we have, lies, the moon, lies, I hear it clearly, deceit, things under the surface, also unknown, after some sneaky stuff has been discovered. The Seven of Swords is uh, theft, subterfuge, scams, anything behind someone's back, sneaking to visit another, anything, any sneaky crap. This in the reverse is after it's happening, happened. And, and I almost said happening. So some people are gonna be in the process because we know that energy is fluid. So you could be ahead of this energy, in this energy or behind it. So. 
This is after some funky crud has happened and someone wants to revisit the scene of the crime, but the upper world is telling you that there are still lies and illumination and things that are hidden. And then also unknown, causing someone to have sleepless nights, anxiety, and worry. Anything else for the upper world? Thank you. Anything else, upper world? Upper world, anything else? Last pass for the upper world, thank you. Last pass for upper world. All right, so two cards additionally. So this sleepless night, worry and anxiety after this yucky stuff that's happened, unknown, causing someone now, in the upright, this is about a single feminine energy enjoying the fruits of her labor. But this has affected your pocket, your money. So where you were living a fruitful life, you, there's scarcity there. And it's all attached to this new love that you have. It comes out as a challenge. The Ace of Cups is new love, a new love relationship. Hmm. It's affecting someone's money. I say it last pass and that's all I get. So the upper world, the message is there are lies, things that are still under the surface after you've discovered already some crappy stuff that's happened. Someone is in sleepless nights, stress, worry, and anxiety and losing lots of money with this new love relationship. Now, the middle world, the message behind that. Matter of fact, I'm gonna leave those there. And I'll use a different deck. That way we can get clear messages for each card. Um, what deck can I use? I'll go here. I got decks everywhere, guys. I'll go to Kipper. Uh-oh. Kipper is wrapped in a orange ribbon. Orange is about sacral energy, pleasurable energy. Sacral chakra is located below your belly button. Nitty gritty. This card, this deck gets to the nitty gritty of the reading. Very detailed deck. Fortune telling deck. What can you add about the middle world? Tell the story about the middle world. The number on the card is 36. 36 reduces to a 9. Nines are all about growth and expansion, some sort of growth and expansion in the middle world. What can you tell us about the middle world? Tell the story of the middle world, please. Thank you. Thank you. Tell the story of the middle world. You saw that, or did you see it? I'll turn the camera in a second. Okay, so what we have falls right here. Unexpected income in the middle world, tangibly here in the 3D. That's great to see. All right, but we have one card coming out before it. Unknown, face down. Sudden wealth in the reverse. Sudden wealth followed by unexpected income. So, what this says is that someone was expecting a large lump sum. This lump sum is going to re be reduced some. This lump sum could also be delayed some. So there's two interpretations of this. these two cards. So expecting a lump sum and expecting it at a certain date, there's a slight delay of maybe two to seven days, a very slight delay. Now, or someone was expecting a lump sum, but this payment ends up being smaller than they uh, was expecting a sudden wealth or some sort of inheritance is what I get. And this lump sum payment is actually smaller. get that from the definition of the cards because a sudden wealth is a huge lump sum. Unexpected income is like a, a lottery win winning or um, an unexpected income, a raise, 
a bonus, something smaller. So this is huge versus smaller. So it lets me know that there's going to be some sort of um, reduction in what you expected to get. But that still is unexpected income. It's still a gain. Middle world. What else do we have for middle world? Last pass for middle world. And when I don't get any additional cards, that means that's exactly our story. So, yes, there's some sort of payout here in the physical, in the 3D, that's going to be delayed slightly or be slightly less than you initially thought it would be. And then we'll go ahead and clarify the lower world. All right, let's see what we have for the lower world. I'll stick with Kipper. Actually, they want me to use another deck, so I'll go to playing cards. Oh, they want me over here, and I don't use this deck ever. I don't think I've ever used this deck on YouTube. It's my vice versa deck. All right, so what do you have for us, lower world? Tell the story of the lower world. Lower world, why is it here? Why is the lower world here? Thank you. Okay, so someone's turned their back on this new love. Okay, but when it comes out as a lower world clarification, that means that, and it's this empress has thinking about turning her back on this new love, but you're acting in your lower tendencies when you're doing that, okay? I just want you to be aware. This is my Empress card. This is all the queens in one. She can grow anything. She's her in her lower tendencies want, thinking about turning her back on this new love. Anything else for the lower world? Anything else for the lower world? Thank you. And it's causing stress, worry, sleepless nights, and anxiety. Yes, this is double confirmation. Same card, different deck. Nine of Swords. You're stressing for nothing. Meditate, get to silence, go inside. It'll all be clear. Thank you. As I say, it'll all be clear. What'll be clear? That there is no new passionate spark, new, no new creative endeavor. This is the reverse of the Ace of Wands. And also Ace of Wands gives me um, sexual energy also. This is the fortunate side, the good side, the upright side. This is the reverse. So you, I get it. You're telling yourself all of these things. And then we have the nine of cups in reverse. So you're also saying that there's no wish fulfillment here, but it's all because you've tricked yourself. It's all because you're acting in your lower tendencies. Something has happened here in the past and you have you were refusing to let it go. And at the same time, you're putting your little pinky toe in it, but you can't do that. You, that's being in two minds about something and it'll keep you stagnant. You have to make up your mind. So either you're going to give fully to the situation or you're not. And that makes sense too. look at these cards. It's like an imbalance here right in the middle world. And it's because it's your thinking. You're somewhere that where you've been guided to be, but there's been some funky stuff that happened and you are sitting in that. So either do the work and work through it or leave. Because right now you do both, your, whoever the other party is a disservice and yourself because you're creating stagnant energy. Here we go with these opposing, opposing forces again. Just is do I stay or go? Do I work this out or not? 
what's the best way? These are all the questions I keep hearing. This will be my last pass for the lower world. Thank you. Thank you. So we have quite a few coming out as the last pass. What we have is someone taking a pause to evaluate what they've invested in to see if it will gain them the fruit. Then we have the Eight of Wands. This is drama. And the upright. This is quick movement, fast communication and travel. This is doing those things haphazardly without thinking. Then we have the world card in the reverse. This is the fortunate side. This is an ending in the reverse. Someone is trying to delay an ending. Coming out as a challenge because they were juggling in the past. That's the fortunate side. That's juggling. This is an illumination of the juggling. This is something that is behind your back. Comes out as a challenge. And it involves some sort of two of cups energy. This is soulmate. Mutual adoration, love, and respect. This is the unfortunate side of this card, upright side. So it is definitely a soulmate relationship where someone is uh, taking a step back to see if they are gonna get from it what they want, doing things haphazardly without thinking, trying to delay an ending. There's a third party here, they're juggling. And one of the people that they're juggling haphazardly is their soulmate relationship. And it is this confused empress. Let's see if I can get anything additionally on this empress. She's turned her back to the uh, situation, but it's all because she's acting in her lower tendencies. What else can you tell me about the empress? Anything else about the Empress? Anything? Thank you. And then I have a tower coming out in the challenge. And it's the funky tower. It's the kind that rocks your whole world. It dismantles your world. You see the difference between these, the imagery on both? This is a dismantling that strikes the building. This is a dismantling that strikes the building that then strikes the people that are involved. So it's the unfortunate side of the tower. She's experienced some sort of funky stuff that has her turning her back to the situation. Set, second indication of that with the uh, seven of swords. Anything else about this empress? I get it. I get the story completely. Thank you. But she's gaining no positive movement forward with the chariot. This is the reverse of the chariot. This is the fortunate side. So she's not, she's stuck. And I feel the energy so intently. And all I, I, I said it earlier, as long as you remain in a stagnant thought process, your energy remains stagnant. Okay, so you have to get to that part of you that quiets your mind so you can get to your soul to answer questions about should you stay or go? Is this a fortunate uh, situation for you or not? But what you cannot do is remain stuck in two minds about it. Your higher consciousness has told you that there's something hidden here after some already funky stuff. It's caused you to have anxiety, sleepless nights and worry, caused you to lose money. And what? It's in this new relationship that you have. In the middle world, your money is being reduced. You were expecting sudden wealth, but now you get a smaller amount and a delay. And then in your lower tendencies, you're still stressed, worried, anxiety, 
aware that this passionate new spark is not as passionate as you once thought it would be. And thinking about, um, well, yeah, this is my wish fulfillment, but is it really? Is what this card says to me. Then we have someone here that's actually taking a pause. But even in this pause, they're acting haphazardly and trying to delay an ending to juggling. And one of the people that they're juggling is their two of cups. And this empress is one of those people and she's turned her back to it because there's been something that's transpired that burned her and the other person and dismantled a foundation. And she's stuck because there's no positive movement forward here. I say it last pass, but I do not want to um, end on that. So then we have the four of swords here. This is after taking a pause after um, some stuff has happened. Now, it's after the ruins has been cleaned up is what I just heard. On the reverse of this, you can see the ruins still burning in the background and the person is taking a pause. But this is a long pause. The ruin is already cleaned up and they're still in a pause. A pause about what? Not giving tangibly to this relationship. This new relationship, double confirmation of it. Ace of Pentacles. This one is in the challenge. This one is upright. So this empress has turned her back on this relationship. But I can tell you now that it is a prosperous place, but it's been a whole bunch of stuff going on. A whole bunch. And there needs to be some coming clean of some stuff that still lies under the surface. And your ancestors are trying to guide you through this for the best outcome for all involved. But in order for you to get the guidance, you have to meditate. You have to get in silence so you can get clear direction. Thank you. And as I say clear direction, what comes out first is the Queen of Swords to not cut something off. It's the back of it. Queen of Swords in, its, in her active state is a no-nonsense. Excuse me, this is the King of Swords. King of Swords is my thoughtful, um, stern, introspective king. He comes out in the reverse. So taking on the energy or turning your back to a King of Swords. That's what I just heard. So yeah, it's a third party. But the King of Swords is the person you're supposed to turn your back to. And the King of Swords is represented by air signs. So Aries, excuse me, Aquarius, Libra, Gem Gemini. And come to a reunion. But this is the bad side of this card. Three of Cups. This is the joyful reunion. This is a sad reunion. So if I read this back, this, Kim this Empress has turned her back on the situation after a yucky situation, a tower that burned her and the other person. There's no positive movement forward. She's taken a long pause, not tangibly giving to this new love relationship with this King of Swords and realizing that this was not a good choice, not a good reunion with this Three of Cups. This is the reverse of the Three of Cups. So that's what we have. last pass. I don't think you want to end on such a yucky, but it, our message is what it is. Last pass and what we get here is the King of Cups in his shadowy aspect though. This is the King of Cups. Oh no. Wow. This is the King of Ch Chalices in his open to love state. When I look at this dark skies, it gives me a dark feeling. So there's something, and this is the reverse of it, but something about this King of Cups is shadowy. Something. Because this is him and his fool to love, open heart, ready to give state. But I feel shadow. And that's probably what you feel and the reason why your back is turned to it. Then I'm directed at the bottom of the deck which is death. 
not to transform, to put an end to. So this is the death card, the good side. And this is death, like ending. All right, I'll go ahead and get us a card of advice for navigating the energy in the spread. One card of advice for navigating the energy in the spread, please. One card of advice, please, to navigate the energy in the spread. One card for navigating the energy in the spread, please. One card for navigating the energy. Thank you. And it is exactly what I've been saying multiple times. And it is to the masculine energy. It falls on the right side. Yeah, the right side of my chair. And it is inner voice. It showed its face. And then it fell face down. So someone is not listening to their inner voice. And that's what you need to do. You need to seek solitude so you can get clear guidance. I'll read from the book, Inner Voice. If I can find the book. Where is the book? Hmm. Interesting. I have no clue. Give me a second. Okay, guys, my apologies. It was all the way across the room and the living room. So, inner voice reading from the book. The all-knowing faculty of the soul enables you to experience direct perception of truth. The only way to know and to live in truth is to develop the power of intuition. Then you will see that life has a meaning and that no matter what you are doing, the inner voice is guiding you. Cart message. I am the wolf of wisdom. I have arrived to tell you to listen and trust your inner voice. Your inner voice is the language of intuition and meditation strengthens your high sense perception. To hear your inner voice, you must dedicate time to be alone. Silence is needed for peaceful and clear decision making. It is essential for your happiness and serenity that you give yourself the gift of silence. When you develop your intuition, you will receive truth from your soul without the intermediary of your senses. Practice listening. Use your inner voice to guide you and you will form a bond of trust with your creator. Your choices will be made through the use of your wisdom rather than through your ego or mind. You will come to understand that this inner knowing is the voice of God. Introspection. Am I allowing myself the silent time I need to hear my inner voice? Am I listening and taking action when I receive messages from my inner voice? Do I trust my intuition? What steps can I take to be more in tune with my inner voice? Affirmation. I listen and trust my inner voice. Absolutely. I said that at the beginning, it's about getting your discernment to the place where no matter where the information is coming from, you'll be able to notify or notice a falsehood, okay? So say it with me. I listen and trust my inner voice. Yes, yes, yes. Well, thank you, my beautiful people, for spending time with me. I look forward to digging deeper into this series. I, You guys, don't forget to check out the description box below. I'll have additional information, angel numbers, numerology, additional insight. Until next time, I'm wishing you a day, a month filled with miracles and blessings. Namaste.